Hey guys, welcome to the video today. In today's video, I'm going to review and show you how to use this OBD2 code reader by this brand HyperTuff. And I got this at Walmart. Here's the back of the package here. And this is a good tool to have if your check engine light is on so you can get the trouble codes in your vehicle and find out what's going on with your vehicle. So um, it also comes with a quick reference guide here and the model number on this OBD2 code reader is HT30. And there's a QR code here and if you scan that it will take you to the website so you can download the uh, user's manual and make sure to read through that and understand it completely before you do use the OBD2 code reader. It will tell you everything you need to know on how to use it both safely and properly. So OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics and all cars and light trucks model year 1996 and newer that were sold in the US were required to have this port in the vehicle. So any vehicles that are 1996 or newer, you will most likely have the port on the driver's side underneath the dash. If your car or light truck was sold outside of the US, it's still possible that you have this in your vehicle. Just take a look around to confirm for sure. Okay, let me show you how the OBD2 code reader hooks up to my 2006 Toyota Corolla. Okay, so here's where the OBD2 port is on my 2006 Toyota Corolla. It's on the driver's side underneath the dash. And if you notice, it's longer on the top than it is on the bottom and it has angled sides. So just make sure that you hook up the OBD2 code reader the right way. Let me go ahead and hook up the OBD2 code reader and I'll be back. Okay, so I have the OBD2 code reader hooked up, and when you do hook up the OBD2 code reader, you need to turn your vehicle to the on position. You don't need to start up your vehicle, but you do need it to the on position so the onboard computer can communicate with the OBD2 code reader. Um, so then we're going to go ahead and hit enter here. And right now the OBD2 code reader is communicating with the onboard computer in my 2006 Toyota Corolla. And it shouldn't take too long. Here we go. Okay, here's some info here. It says codes found one. And then it talks about the different monitors. And we'll talk about that more um, when we go into the I am readiness feature on this code reader. Um, so let's just go through uh, the menu. Um, and we'll start with the first one, which is read codes. So if we hit enter here... It will take us into, um, you know, what code or codes you have on your onboard computer. So right now I have code P0420. And you can see up here that it says one of one. Um, you know, if you had multiple codes, it would tell you, you know, and you'd have to scroll through your multiple codes. And then it says catalyst system efficiency below threshold bank one. And unless you're a mechanic and do this for a living, we're not going to know what that means. But this is when you would go to the internet and you would do some research to figure out what this specific code meant. Um, and then decide if it's something you want to try to repair yourself or if you want to bring it to a mechanic. Okay, so the next option is erase codes. And if you go into this option, you can erase the trouble codes in your vehicle. I'm going to go to no. Um, because if you do erase the trouble codes in your vehicle, it will turn off the check engine light. But if you haven't made the repair um, on your vehicle, uh, the onboard computer will detect whatever the original problem was and it will just turn the check engine light back on. So um, the next option here is view freeze frame. And this is a great option because, um, you know, if you have a trouble code, when that trouble code was stored in the onboard computer, um, it also stored a bunch of different information of what was going on with your vehicle at that time. So, um, you know, sometimes this can help narrow down exactly what's going on with your vehicle because sometimes a trouble code alone doesn't give you all the information that you need to know what's going on with your vehicle. So an example on my 2006 Toyota Corolla is the P0420 code that we're getting. That could be different things. It could be the catalytic converter. It could be one of the O2 sensors. And sometimes this screen will help you narrow down uh, why you're getting a particular trouble code. And you would just go to the internet and you do some research for the thresholds for your vehicle, um, you know, based off the code that you're getting and see if this helps narrow down why you might be getting that trouble code. 
Okay, let's exit out here. Okay, so the next option is I am readiness. And I have a video where I talk about I am readiness in detail. And I'll link that video at the end of this one. And if you have time, please check it out. So the I am readiness option is a good one to use before you go and get your vehicle emissions tested. It will let you know the status of the monitors in your onboard computer. So we can see on the first screen here uh, that the MIL status is on and MIL stands for malfunction indicator lamp, which is another name for the check engine light. And then we can see that the three monitors on the first screen are okay. So on the second screen here, we can see that two monitors are okay and two are NA. And NA means that those monitors are just not available on my 2006 Toyota Corolla. And then on the third screen, we can see one of the monitors is okay and three are NA. So um, another, another option that you might see in here for one of the monitors is INC for incomplete. Um, and most likely what that means is recently you've either erased the trouble codes in your vehicle, which also resets the monitors, or you had your battery disconnected recently, uh, which could also clear out the, the memory from the onboard computer. Okay, and for the monitors to go back to the OK status from the incomplete status, you do need to complete drive cycles on your vehicle. And I talk more about that in the video that I'll link at the end of this video. So please check that out if you have time. Okay, let's back out here. And the next option is vehicle info. And if we go into vehicle info... This is where you can get information about your vehicle ID number, your calibration ID, the calibration verification number, um, you know, if your vehicle is compatible with this option. So let's go back to the previous menu. And then we're going to exit back here to the main menu and we can go into the setup mode. They also have a setup mode where you can select different languages. So here are the different languages they have. Um, you can change the unit of measure from English to metric. You can go into contrast and change the contrast of the screen if you wanted to. And then exit back out to the main screen here. So this is a great tool to have, and whether you decide to try to repair your vehicle yourself or if you decide to bring it to a mechanic, this gives you valuable information about what might be going on with your vehicle. So when you call around to the mechanics, you can talk to them about potential problems of the trouble code or trouble codes that you're getting and what potential uh, pricing is for those types of repairs. So, you know, it can give you a better idea of what it's going to cost to get it fixed and also allow you to shop around with different mechanics so you can find the best value. Um, I hope you guys have liked this video and thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and if you have the time, check out these other great videos.